So for this episode of New Business Ideas, we are specifically focusing on blockchain and cryptocurrency companies. So here we have Chad with Heroic. Uh, we have got John with Consensus, and we've got Brian with He's Got an Incubator. I keep calling it an incubator. What's the actual name of it? Right now I'm with Block V. Block V. Block V. I was going to say Block V, and I'm like, no, that's not what it was. Not what it was. Okay, so to start off, what was your first company, and how old were you when you started it? I mean, mine, I was like 12, and it was a lawn mowing business, and really my dad started it. He just told me what to do. What was yours? So uh, my first business was actually, my dad was an entrepreneur and he had a ceiling fan business. We lived in Arizona and everybody needed ceiling fans. And I would sit outside of his office and make paper airplanes and sell paper airplanes to the people that would walk by. And I did fairly well. For like $10, $20? No, probably a dollar or $2, but it would give me enough to go get some candy at the the 7-Eleven right next door. And That'd probably be my first business. Okay, John. All right, mine was probably, I didn't start very young. Uh, I, mine was probably when I was 18, maybe. Uh, I was in college, uh, did an advertising class where we put together a spec advertising campaign um, for watches. And I loved the campaign so much that I decided to start importing watches from China and try actually like going forth with this advertising campaign to actually test it out. And kind of did that for maybe two years and then uh, for reasons that all startups kind of fade eventually, or not all startups fade, but ours faded. So. Okay. And Brian with Block V? Yeah. So I guess I was an old man compared to you guys. Um, you know, I did a lot of stuff in the, in the early days, but the first kind of business I ran where I paid taxes on it was in, <laughs> I think I was 23 years old. He okay. was right here in Provo. Uh, and I, I actually took over a mattress company. Uh, so a BYU student started a mattress company selling mattresses out of, uh, I guess, storage units. And at the time, they were selling like five, ten mattresses a month. And so my friend and I, we took over the company and we built it up to where we were selling like 80 mattresses out of a month. Or, I'm sorry, per month. And what would happen is by by appointment only, people would show up. We'd open up a storage unit door. Okay. And there'd be six mattresses laid out like a showroom. And people would come lay on them and they say, oh, we, we want this one. I'd go right next door, open the next storage unit, and there was my inventory. I'd throw it in my pickup and go go drop it off. Um, was so, this in Utah? Because I may have right been here one in of Provo. your buyers. Yeah, I was probably one of your buyers. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that, that was my first thing that I, I had a business, paid taxes on it, and things like that. And it was so much fun. Now, there's a lot of mattress companies around, like mattress firms. They're like on every single corner. Like, I don't know. I was watching a video last night that said it was a conspiracy theorist to launder money. Like, there's just too many of them for there's such a large markup on mattresses that, you know, you don't have to sell many to actually, you know, cover your overhead and, mm-hmm. and make a couple bucks. So as just a young dude married with one, one kid, I mean, we made enough money to just have fun, survive and, and run my own schedule. Okay. So per- fun. perfect. So let's start with you, Brian. What is your new business idea? Probably I'm assuming it's going to be in blockchain. What in Yeah. So let's put 30 seconds on the clock, do your intro of, or elevator pitch and let's hear it. Yeah. For me, I've always been a little ADD jumping from idea to idea. Even when I wasn't an entrepreneur, I was working for other people. I couldn't spend more than two years somewhere because I I wanted to go learn something else. I wanted to to move on to the next thing. So for me, if I, if I wasn't with block V, I would start an incubator accelerator, uh, where I've got connections with marketing and funding and legal, um, developers in this space we need more people building more cool things. And so for me, I want to launch that accelerator, that, that incubator where ideas are coming in. It's similar to consensus, um, which can be talked about, you know, here in a bit, but really the idea is to get more entrepreneurs doing more cool things in the space. We, mm-hmm. we just don't have enough people building, even though when you look around, it's like, oh man, this is everywhere and everybody's talking about it. There's very few people actually working in the space. There's a lot of people buying tokens and coins and speculating, um, but there's not a ton of people building. And so I want to uh, help that move forward and really bring some of these cool ideas to, to light. Okay. It's going to be hard, I think, for the good idea, bad idea segment, because I think something like that'd be very, very valuable from my perspective. But let's, I mean, let's say good idea, bad idea. We'll start with Chad. Well, I think it's a great idea specifically because uh, we do need this. There is a huge need right now for people that know uh, blockchain development that have some experience in it. And because it's so new, the the workforce right now is so little. And uh, yeah, it's not only do we need 
uh, developers, but we need really good companies that are training developers and holding their hand and taking them through the process and really giving them an opportunity to learn on the job. And uh, I, I love it. Is that part of the thing to the training piece? Of yeah, you bet. You bet. I mean, I so I own a domain called blockchainbootcamp.com. And, and part of the reason I own that is simply to say there's so many good developers out there that aren't working on blockchain technologies. Uh, and, and every company out there, BlockV and, and Consensus and others, they're all looking for good developers, heroic. I mean, there's, <laughs> they're really hard to find. That's number one. But number two is there's a lot of... Um, entrepreneurs who have a good idea, but they don't know the, the legal ramifications of what they're doing. They don't have marketers that can actually distill their message and present it to the community in a way that, it, that they can understand, you know? Um, so there's a lot of pieces to launching a company. And so this accelerator would, would bring whatever piece is necessary for a certain company to actually get to market. Developers is, is one of the big pieces. How does one actually begin building a blockchain business or something on like Ethereum or something like that? Because like to me, it just seems really like I know how to build a website. I know how to build simple you know mobile apps with my teams. But the concept of actually like plugging into Ethereum, I'm clueless on. Can I touch on on this one point, though? Um, just coming from a consensus standpoint where that's kind of their model, right, is like uh, um, I think that the execution of it is really important. And not only uh, is Block V its own blockchain or is it a, a company that is on top of? Yes. Yeah, so, so let's make a distinction real quick. So I'm with Block V right Block now. V, which but this is, is the one a, that, yeah, yeah this, this is the this one that my you next would idea, do. right? Well, but Block V is blockchain agnostic. Got it. Okay. Because the reason I ask is that Consensus is so interesting because it's not necessarily just a production studio for these uh, these different businesses, but it's also a spokes like a, a bolsterer for Ethereum itself. Right. And it makes so much sense for Joe because it's like if you have a large stakeholding in Ethereum in general, it doesn't even matter if most of them fail as long as everybody is talking about Ethereum and people are pushing forward Ethereum, all the businesses can fail and he can still win because if Ethereum succeeds, then he succeeds. Isn't that the great thing about blockchain technology, though? I mean, once you're in, that's what that's how this whole thing started was a community that cared about Bitcoin. So they were incentivized to go out and talk about it, build things, you know, get 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 people involved. And then we see Ethereum come out and those who hold Ether, they want people to be building on top of Ethereum. They want it to work. And so even with Block V, we have our own native token and we want people building on top of our platform because we all win if, if people are building on top of Block V because Block V is also, um, you know, tied to Ethereum and Bitcoin and other blockchains. And so that's what I love about this industry. It's so open. It's it it, it really allows for um, working together in a way that no other industry um, I've seen has has uh, has done. Absolutely. One of the things on that is, uh, you know, really what blockchain is uh, the Internet is a data exchange protocol. Data goes back and forth. And what blockchain is, it's a value exchange protocol. It provides access to significant value. And giving, getting people on board and helping train them and helping build on top of that just magnifies that value. Uh, like with Ethereum, getting as many people on to, onto Ethereum and building on top of it, it just magnifies the value of it and, and helps the community move forward. Perfect. Now, what is Block B? Do you want to give us a rundown on what that is and how people could be, get involved or partner with you? Yeah, you bet. So Block V is, we, we call it Blockchain 3.0 uh, because we're talking about bringing the experiential layer to blockchain technologies. So we talk about inter, inter, interface moments for you know the internet for browsers uh, we talk about the interface moment for apps so the app store you know apple uh, we believe block v is the interface moment to blockchain so getting getting the normal i say normal um getting my mom and dad involved using blockchain technologies without them even knowing so it's it's a it is a platform that allows developers to create smart digital objects so that they they serve kind of like apps but they have the um the the uh, characteristics of uh, cryptocurrencies, exchangeable, um, ownable, shareable. And so it allows for all kinds of cool business models to be built on top of Block V. One of them is smart ticketing, you know, where you at the end of a concert, your ticket actually morphs into, let's say, a special edition ticket stub that's on the blockchain. 
because you want to show ownership. You were at the concert, you own this, but maybe you went to a U2 concert with your girlfriend and she doesn't care or you don't care about Bono and U2. So now all of a sudden you have this, this digital object that has value. Well, now you can put it on our marketplace and sell it to a fanboy that's collecting these, these objects of value, these, these ticket stubs that are special edition. I mean, that's just one use case. Um, but we have uh, medical use cases, gaming use cases, and it's all being built on top of our platform. What would be like an example of a medical use case? Yeah, so imagine a, we call them VATOMs. Those are uh, virtual atoms. Okay. Imagine this object gets sent to you from your doctor. Mm -hmm. It's a prescription bottle. Mm -hmm. And in real time, every time you take a pill, for instance, you click it and you can see it go empty in real time. As soon as it goes empty, it automatically triggers a connection to your prescription provider and says, okay, this person is out of their, their whatever the drug is, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so there's this, there's this way that there's a communication now. So as soon as it goes empty, a chat bot opens and now you're chatting with, with the pharmacy and you get a refill ordered for you. And as soon as that refill gets ordered, you get a ping on your phone and now all of a sudden that bottle is full with pills again. You're like, ah, oh, okay, I can go pick it up. And it allows, it allows the, uh, the pharmacy to actually communicate with you directly and it's an experiential way for you to manage that usage of, of uh, the drug. Perfect. What about for gaming? How would BlockV help with that? Yeah. What, what's really fun about gaming is uh, there's one company we're working with. They own 15 different titles okay. of games. And what they want is they, they basically want to put objects like Easter eggs in, okay. in all of the different games. And if you, if you find that object, you can actually extract that object from that particular game, send it to your phone in what we call a viewer, which is an app. You can then sell that on an exchange. Mm -hmm. You can prove ownership of it, or you can actually import it into a different game. So you might be in a game where it's like swords and, and you know, uh, bows and arrows, and you've got a bazooka. And everybody's like, where did you get that bazooka? Well, mm -hmm. they actually found it in a different game, and they were able to import it over. Okay. Um, so there's this interoperability between objects. Uh, so it doesn't matter where you get the object, uh, Pokemon Go style. Uh, you could take that object and drop it on a map, and somebody else can come pick it up, and, and now they have that object that you shared with them. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for sharing your idea. Before we head out, is there anything you guys would like to add to, you know, to anything that Brian has shared? Um, no, I mean, I have questions, but I don't want to take up, like, I don't want to take up the entire time. Do it, go, go. Well, so uh, one of my questions is for the first one, it's like a heavy in the internet of things, mm -hmm. right? Is this a blockchain that is focused on internet of things, like with the prescription pill, you know, and coming up with devices that are interfacing with it? Or like, what's the, what's the 3.0 portion? Because some of the use cases that you're talking about, I would see are available with current day blockchain sure. technology, right? Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. So th the idea is these objects are actually programmable. So and when you say objects, are these digital objects or are these like actual in real world objects? It can be either, but for instance, let's say you're familiar with CryptoKitties, okay. right? CryptoKitties was just pictures of cats really it had back on the back and there's code and, and it says okay if you breed this type of cat with this type of cat you could get this special edition crypto kitty and, and so there's value in that well imagine if that crypto kitty was actually like a 3d object that could act that could change in real time and morph in real time based on code that's on the back end so that when you when you breed it um, you get a different experience than if it's j than just being like a picture. Um, and then you go, Oh, actually, I don't, I don't want this one anymore. I'm just going to share it with somebody. Well, it can be shareable or it can just be one copy of it as a limited edition item where I could just send it to you and you have a viewer. And now you have that cat and you can prove ownership of the cat. Mm. Right. I mean, that's so, so the idea is to say there's these objects that should be able to be programmed and have, again, the properties of cryptocurrency that right now apps, apps lack a lot of those, those, uh, those properties. Wow. Blockv.io, you can read about it. Perfect. And, and, Watch a video. And do you have an initial first use case? Like uh, your first, like, we are going to do this thing first. Well, what's fun is we've already done quite a few things. Um, so one of them is Abundance 360. If, if, are you guys familiar with Abundance 360, the conference? Mm -mm. Peter Diamandis, founder of XPRIZE, Singularity University, um, kind of a big futurist. He has a conference every year. Uh, the attendees pay, you know, 
I think it's $12,500 for this conference and, and, and they become a part of abundance, this group. So this year they actually used us, um, for their ticketing system and for their raffle giveaways. So what would happen is when somebody signed up and said, okay, yeah, I want to go to abundance 360, they got a VATM, which was a ticket VATM in that VATM was all the information of the venue, the time, where to meet, where the registration is, but it was also a redeemable ticket. So when somebody showed up, they would say, Oh, here's my ticket. The worker would tap it and redeem it. As soon as it was redeemed, it automatically morphed into a video of, of abundance 360 saying, Hey, thanks for being here. You know, and, and it showed this video of, of, um, last year's conference or whatever. Then they got another one that was for a raffle. So it was kind of a random number generator on the back end. And so everybody in the room would hold their phone <coughs> and they're watching to see if they received the VATM for uh, this giveaway that was up on the, on the screen. And so that was all programmed on the back end uh, through our platform. So that, that's a real life use case that, that's been done. And now everybody that went to Abundance 360 has kind of a keepsake. They can prove they were there. They can show ownership of their ticket. Um, and again, that's just a very simple um, use case that we've done. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for sharing your idea and join us next time for John to share his new business idea. So thank you so much for joining us, guys.